So next we'll talk about looking at the abdominal aorta a little bit. And for the most part, I'm going to go through how you would incorporate this into caring for symptomatic patients. But recognize also if you're working in primary care, there are guidelines for screening for abdominal aortic aneurysm that you could apply into an outpatient clinic as well. I'm not going to go into too much depth on the guidelines, but just recognize that this is another potential, not just inpatient, but also an outpatient application of point of care ultrasound. So start off with imaging tips again. Little things can make a big difference in your success in imaging, so always try to do these things when you can. Patients should have their arms down at their sides, not kind of up behind their head. That's going to tense their abdominal muscles and make things harder. I like to get their knees flexed a little bit, again, to relax those abdominal muscles. And a lot of times I'll find that if you have the patient take in a breath and then exhale, as they exhale, you can apply a little more pressure and get the probe just that much closer to the aorta and get a little bit better images of their abdominal aorta as well. So try these things. These are all things we do to improve our abdominal exam. They also are going to improve our ultrasound of the abdominal aorta. So we'll just do a transverse from the xiphoid. We first identify the aorta, and then we want to follow it its whole length in the abdomen from the xiphoid process all the way down until we see it bifurcate into the iliacs. So we follow it down, and then for point of care purposes, I really don't think you need longitudinal images unless you see an abnormality on the transverse images. Big tips when you're identifying this is you've got to find the spine. I'm going to beat that to death. So you find the spine first, so you should see this kind of bright white arc in a shadow. The aorta should sit on top of the spine. Sometimes you may have to image, come to the sides to get around bowel gas, especially because we often, in the inpatient world, in the emergency department world, we don't have patients that are fasting. And then we want to find the aorta on top of the spine and trace it all the way down till we see the bifurcation. And I even like to, if I can, see the first little bits of the iliac arteries as well, because aneurysm is there, less common, but may occur also. So a few variations. One of the common mistakes that sometimes you can see is you'll see the vessel here and you think it looks small and normal, but you've made the mistake of not getting adequate depth and not identifying the spine. So this is the same patient. We increase our depth and we see the spine is actually back here. This is their abdominal aorta. This is the superior mesenteric artery sitting up more superficially, but this is sometimes mistaken for the aorta itself um, because we didn't make sure we identified the spine and we looked too superficially. So emphasize again, make sure you're deep enough, you see the spine with its shadow first, then identify your aorta from there. Once again, just another variation. Here again, looks like the abdominal aorta right here, even looks like the spine behind it, but no, in fact, our depth is too shallow, and what we're seeing here, this is the abdominal aorta, and when we correct our depth, we see the spine back here, this is the abdominal aorta, this is the superior mesenteric artery. So make sure you have enough depth, even err on the side of excessive depth, to make sure you find the spine. And if we recognize other landmarks that this is splenic vein, that would also be a clue that this is too superficial, and not the abdominal aorta. And one other one, this is not as common, but could happen if you aren't careful, is if you're just focusing your eyes on the wrong spot or you're having trouble and you may see something that looks like aorta, but if you get your eyes in the right place, now this one probably wouldn't happen, but this is the actually the intervertebral disc. So as we scan through the spine, when we see the bony parts of the vertebral bodies, we'll just see a shadow, but there are occasions where we can see the outline of their intervertebral disc, and then some of the spinal canal and a shadow behind. That could fool us for aorta. Now, hopefully we would never miss this abdominal aortic aneurysm on top of the intervertebral disc and then a shadow behind. So as you scan down through the abdomen, just be mindful of what your landmarks are and what they look like. So we saw some normal aortas. The diameter should always be less than three centimeters, really should be two and a half is really pretty much the max. And it tapers as you go down the abdomen. 
here, and most of the time our main question is going to be, is the aorta dilated or not? And our most accurate measurement in this transverse view is from anterior to posterior, we measure from the outer wall to the outer wall. So here's an abnormal aorta, this is an aortic aneurysm. Uh, here we see an aorta with a flap that's moving during the cardiac cycle, so this is an aortic dissection. Aortic dissection we may find, there's high specificity for point of care ultrasound for aortic dissection, not high sensitivity. So you can't truly rule out a dissection with point-of-care ultrasound, you may rule it in. And then we may have patients who are, have had post-operative things where they've got, uh, had an old aortic aneurysm and now they've got an aortoiliac graft in place and that's what this may look like. So just recognize those findings and don't let them confuse you. You're still gonna have to interpret this all in clinical context. Just a few other findings, so dissection we kind of mentioned. You may find this in symptomatic patients. It's a flap that moves throughout the cardiac cycle. Here's what it looks like in short axis. That's the IVC over here. And if we look in long axis, we can see this flap that's moving through the cardiac cycle. Again, we're not gonna rule this out with point of care ultrasound, but we may rule it in quickly and expedite what we're gonna do with that patient next. A few more examples of dissection. So here's a pretty obvious clear dissection. Again, it moves with the cardiac cycle. Here we're down pretty much at the iliac bifurcation. We can see this one involves both of the iliac vessels, so here and here, sitting over top of the spine. You see the spine here as well. And then an aneurysm is again just large. If you see thrombus within an aortic aneurysm, your measurement should include the entire aorta and go out to the outer wall. Don't measure inside the thrombus. So as always, with all ultrasound and all imaging, really, we interpret our findings in the clinical context. You may have a patient with back or abdominal pain. You find an aortic aneurysm, and it is possible that that's an incidental finding because there are patients walking around with stable aortic aneurysms that have other causes for their back or abdominal pain. So just keep that in mind. Use the clinical context, and be wary of mimics because any large fluid-filled structure can fool you seen cases of gallbladders that kind of sit in the middle and can mimic an aortic aneurysm. If you see something, fall it all the way down, see how it relates to the spine, try not to make mistakes in judgment like that or interpretation. So with that in context, we can come back to our third case, this 79 year female with acute back pain, blood pressure is kind of soft. We can quickly identify this aorta that's too large. We see some thrombus within here. We're focused in a little bit more. Spine is back here, so spine back here, aortic aneurysm on top. This is the superior mesenteric artery. Don't get fooled by that. Make sure you have adequate depth. And if you want to make a measurement of this, you measure from the outer wall to the outer wall. Your measurement goes outside of the thrombus all the way from wall to wall. In this case, this might expedite our care. If the patient's unstable, we may be in a position where we need a vascular consult quickly, or this may at least expedite us and say, this case patient goes to CAT scan next and moves ahead of the other patients, helps us manage our whole department by knowing this information early. So that's ultrasound of the abdominal aorta. Again, you may be able to screen for aortic aneurysm in the outpatient setting, and we may find important findings early, expedite our workup, in the inpatient and the emergency department setting. And then transverse in the mid abdomen. We start very high, come down through the left lobe of the liver. Here's celiac trunk. The little seagull right there. And then just below that is pancreas, so.
splenic vein runs over top of the superior mesenteric artery. All that gray tissue on top, that's pancreas. Spine, aorta, SMA, splenic vein, pancreas. And if we're really good, we can sometimes see there's right renal artery. There was left renal artery cutting down. And from here, we follow the aorta all the way down. Now, I'll point out sometimes as we're following the aorta, we look for the spine. If we catch the intervertebral disc, we can see the spinal canal sitting behind the disc. We want to follow the aorta until it splits into the right and left iliacs, which is right there. So let's just look at the aorta in long axis. So up high on the abdomen here we see the SMA comes off and runs vertically right in front of the aorta, the celiac trunk comes off and then splits off right away. And if we just fan to the patient's right a little bit and rock up towards the heart, we can see the IVC entering the right atrium. and the middle hepatic vein drains into the inferior vena cava. Aorta runs behind the heart, IVC runs into the heart. You see it collapsing and changing. We see liver on either side of the IVC, whereas aorta, there's no liver behind it. 